Hallo allemaal en welkom bij nog een episode van Irongo Talks. Soos ouder gewoonte, hier op woensdag keer ons vanaf ons kantore. Dus ons studio hier bij Plaats Ameer Mol in Sokopmoend. Ons breng vir julle die nies, die weer getuie as ook krampies visvangverslag. En dan in ons onderhoudsegment gesels ons met Tangeni Mujoro en Eivoline Rosa de Silva, wie die stichters is van die Love Inc. Network. Nou, hierdie twee dames is op een missie om die levens van onze jong seens en dochters daarop wel vers baie te verander. So, hulle gaan vir ons een bykie vertel wie en wat is die Love Inc. Network. Die twee projecten wat um, namens die Pink en die Blue project wat nou thans aan die gang is, en wat is die impact daarvan? Hulle gaan ook vir ons bykie vertel van een fonds en samling gala dinier wat later hierdie maand gaan plaasvind. So, blij asjeblief ingeskakel, ons is nou nou weer terug. En nou breng ons vir julle die nies hier van ons studio by die plaats van meer mol in Sakopmoend. Nou die laarschool Anus het die is die jongste begunstigers van een niet gebouwde klaskamer ter waarde van 190.000 Namibiese dollar wat onder die vandel van Namport sy maatskapelike been die Namport maatskapelike beleggingsfond gebouw is. Nou die klaskamer vraag het 7 leerlinge bevorder gunstige toestande vir onderrig by die school. Die, bo, um, die beleggingsfonds, die trustee Irene Simeon Koerts, het namport so voordierende verbindenis tot maatschappelijke ontwikkelingsbehoeftes van een mobiese gemeenskap herbevestig. Die voormalige schoolhof, Christos Kalonda, waar die skenking namens die school ontvang het, het namport bedank vir sy pogings om die regering bij te staan en een beroep op ander maatschappijen gedoen om die beleggingsfonds voorbeeld te volg. Hy het onderneem om die klaskamers in enige vorm van vandalisme te beskerm, Ten einde te beskerm, ten einde te verseker dat toekomstige leerlinge ook die klaskamer kan benut. Leidens Namportse uitvoerende bestuurder vir commerciële dienste, dit is nou Elias Menjo, het die fonds sê dat sy ontstaan in 2006 reeds meer as 25 miljoen nabibiese dollar in die ontwikkeling van die onderwijssector belee dier klaskamers en ablissiegeriewe te bou om die voorsiening van gehaalte onderwijs in Namibie te ondersteun. Maar nu het gesê ongeveer 1 miljoen nabibiese dollar is in die Otojundzupa streek bele. As een entiteit wat daarna streef om sy voetspore binnen die 14 streke van Namibie te laat, het Namport ook 50.000 nabibiese dollar geskenk vir die aankoop van kopieermachine vir die laarskole Amapole en Joseph Mangula as ook die sekundere school P.I. Groenewald en die senior sekundere school Sakona wat onderscheidelik in die Omosati Oshana om een hekke in Sambesi streek gelee is. Met die algehele doelwit om gehaalte onderwijs te verseker, poog die fonds om nou maar weer sy kennis te verbreer ter die constructie van klaskamers, die verskaffing van opvoedige, opvo, opvoedkundige hulpmiddels en geleentere en ook ter die verskaffing van sanitatiegeriewe aan plattelandse skole. Ten tweedens, niks verhoed vrouwen om actief aan die padveiligheidsagenda deel te neem nie. So het die uitvoerende hoofd van die Namibiese Pad Ongeluksfonds, MWA, Rosalia Martens, hou siku tydens die derde uitgave van die Vrouwe in Padveiligheid Conferentie en Expo in Swakopmund gesê. Van jaarse thema was Vrouwe, katalysators in padveiligheid. Die behoefte om die kritieke en duidelijke rol te herken wat Vrouwe in die bevordering van veiliger paaie speel, word net groter. Ons moet ons stem vind vir veiliger paaie, dit 
bij die plaatselijk en internationale debat voeg voor die veiligheid en bescherming van ons gezinnen en gemeenschappen en om die aanpak van padongelukken op onze nationale economie te verminderen. Maarten zou Suko het vrouwen aangemoedigd om padveiligheid als een persoonlijke verantwoordelijkheid en prioriteit te aanvaar. Ons moet padveiligheid drijven tot voordeel van ons land. Zodoende zal ons mensenleven spaar, gezinsstructuren herstel en beslis een cultuur van padveiligheid kweek. Zij het vrouwen in leiderschapsposities uitgedaagd om die rol te aanvaar wat hulle moet spelen en die belang om levens op paaien te redden. Maarten zou Suko het beklem toen dat padongelukken niet discrimineren nie en gesê dat raak allemaal op een of andere manier. Statistiek wat die MDI se inbeeldcentrum op 3 oktober ingesamele duid daarop dat 74% van alles ongelukslagoffers in die afgelopen drie jaar, dit is nou van 2020 tot 2022, mans was. Hier die statistiek toon dat ongelukken en die gevolgelijke beserings en sterftes steeds voordeel en meer druk plaats op beschikbare hulpbronnen en een reeds onderdrukte economie. Sy het deelnemers daarin herinner dat die feestheid wink beplan asjeblief dien oor een diens oor eenkomstig vir die vakantie om een rustige en vretigvolle tijd saam met familie en vriende deur te bring in plaas van levensveranderende realiteite weens padorgelukke. Ten derdens, een school specifiek voor kinders met Down syndroom kan binnenkort een werkelijkheid wees voor die gemeenschap van Balfus Bay. Nou, Bonita Anton ziet een van die stichters van die Jawe Down syndroom stichting, sê hulle wil een verskil in die levens van kinders wat Down syndroom um, het maak, sowel as hulle ouwerse levens. Ons om elkaar ondersteun en ouwers verseker dat hulle kinders veilig is. Die idee van die school spreidt uit Bonita sy eie ervaring als ma van kleine Nihemia wat vijf jaar oud is wat Down syndroom het. Ons het om in een plaatselijke school gehad, maar hy kon eenvoudig nie aanpas nie. Die jou, jou stichtingse bestuur bestaan uit Bonita Antonsik, Jennifer Lawrence, Ronjaal Engelbrecht, Janus en Skakvik en Jane Lee Antonsik. Tijdens die groepse eerste insameling is fondse gegenereer om ouders met een verzorgingspakket bij te staan. Ons het daarom geslaag om so wat 30 zorgpakketten voor kinders met Down syndroom te maken. Zo is die tijd echter aanstap en moet ons meer ouders met kinders wat Down syndroom het. Ons beoogd is niet om een specifieke aantal kinders bij die school te huiswees nie. Ons wil zoveel so kinders als mogelijk help en niemand inperk of uitsluit nie. Bonita sê verschillende insamelings sal gehou word om in die dagelijkse behoeftes van die school en sy leerlinge te voorzien. Die school moet bijvoorbeeld meubels soos tafels en stoelen bekom. Ons gaan eerst vir die school by my huis oprig tot ons een groter plezier kry indien dit nodig sal wees. Die Jawe stichtig beoog om 26 november of vroeg in december nog een um, fondsinsameling project te hou. Dit zal die Miss Plus Size schoonheidscompetitie wees. Ons wil ook graag die klein goed met skeersgeskenke verras met die geld uit ons dier die competitie en samen. Bonita sê die gemeenschap kan op enige manier help, enige skenkings is meer as welkom. Maar jullie kan gerust een kopie van jullie Sarah Publikein, nummer maar wie in of die Algemeine Zeitung morgen krijgen. dat is donderdag, waar jullie die Irongo bijlag binnen kan sal kry. Gaan loer gerust ook op ons webwerf, dit is www.irongo.com.na www.irongo.com.na So bly asjeblief ingeskakel, ons onderhoud is volgende. Today is a lovely companion, I believe, from Love Inc. Network. Now, this is not the first time you're appearing on Nirongo Talk. So let's quickly just recap who and what is the Love Inc. Network? Um, Love Inc. Network is uh, basically an organization that we um, co founded um, because we really wanted to cater um, for a variety of social ills in our community because we felt. Um, everybody is validated, everybody deserves to be heard, they deserve um, 
to be spoken up for, um, and they deserve to be supported in whichever way they need it. Um, and hence why we um, co-founded Love Inc. Network. Okay, then um, there's a fundraising um, event that is coming up uh, for the end of this month, slated for the 29th of October. Please tell us what the fundraising is about and for who the fundraising is. Um, okay, the, the fundraiser is basically for our organization um, as a whole. Uh, there are two projects that we've um, been running this, this past year, and that is the Pink Project, and then um, which focuses on the Grow Child, more, more on um, programs that um, do continuous programs for the Grow Child, where we just um, give support either in kind or monetarily. Um, we also Part of the Pink Project, we procure a booklet called My First Period, and with that, um, we also procure reusable sanitary um, products, and this we either give directly to schools or then to the organizations um, that work with the girl child. The second pro project that we run is called the Blue Project, um, and the Blue Project um, is a, a continuous boy child intervention program that we have been running this past year. We've actually been running the uh, pilot phase of the Blue Project literally on our with our own resources. Mm -hmm. um, we had three sponsors for the year and we've tried to stretch that out as much as possible. Um, but we also found that there are some activities that we had to cancel because of a lack of funding. So we need funding in order to run the activities of these projects. Why boys? Um, I know there's a, a variety of reasons. Why boys? There are so many projects just focusing on the girl child, you know, and you very rarely hear about the blue, the boy child being empowered or being helped or that has any moral support from the community. That's why we tended on focusing on the boy child and uplifting them in any way possible. Um, just to add on there, if we look at um, the Namibian statistics, the greater percentage of suicides is among males. Men. Our prisons are predominantly filled with young male adults. And um, when we have to go out at night, or if you're traveling at night, just within our towns, who, who, is, who is attacking us? It's our young males. You know, so for, there is some kind of outcry here. Um, and it's, it's an outcry that is becoming very desperate and we, we something needs to be done and, and so hence also the increase of the domestic violence happening in the community the the small boy that was found in, in Karabakh you know this this constantly <clears throat> scenes and and where the, the male is involved in this and the only way to tackle uh, the situation is to focus on the boy child when they are young now, um, the, the, you, you just said that the Blue Project was in its pilot phase this year. Was it a success? <laughs> yes, it, it, yes, yes, it was a success. Of course. It really was a success. Um, we, had, we have 20 boys that have been... We've had 35 boys apply um, and start off, you know, in March. Uh, towards July, it became very tough with, you know, with having to um, have the activities. At times, we did not have it, men stepping up. Um, I know I have been ridiculed, I have been vilified and laughed at because of this project. However, we have had 20 boys that have been committed throughout, through the challenges and, and you know, and through the successful times, we have 20 boys that have been very, very committed. And if only for that reason, it has been an absolute success. Oh, definitely. 20 yes. boys. Ah, 20 boys. Now, um, tell us just about the activities you did with the boys this year. What kind of activities did you do with them? Um, okay, we, we, we had sessions. We have every second Saturday, we would have sessions from 9 o'clock in the morning until 1 o'clock. These are not pre presentation sessions, workshopping sessions, where we would have, um, you know, males come 
and workshop with the boys. We we had a session on um, crafting or developing your um, your vision board, you know, and we had a deep workshop session um, with one of our facilitators um, for that. We've um, we've actually we've also had. Um, uh, a session where, where we were invited oh, there was a session that the local library had with the, um, in conjunction with the American corner and our boys attended and you will not believe this, they were so touched by the three victims, the late victims that shared their stories and the conversation that came out of there was we, um, Namibian men do not know how to treat women and the boys asked how do we treat women can we have a session on that and that is also one of the sessions that we are going to have wow mm -hmm. now we've established what you've done now we need to raise some funds how much funds are you paying or do you want to raise how can the new community get involved with this fundraising um, we would like to raise at least 100,000. That's at least. That means that's not what we need. We need way much more. Mm -hmm. However, um, we just want to close off this year uh, on a strong note and also start the coming year with um, the second boys conference also on a strong note. So um, we are earmarking 100,000 for this particular fundraising initiative, um, and we would love the community to get involved. Um, because as you purchase a ticket, um, as you purchase a table and you come out and see, you are going to come meet the boys in person. You are also going to see our documentary for this pilot space um, where the boys are sharing their journey and how it has impacted them. Um, you are also going to come here a little bit more on the Pink Project and how you can actually get involved in um, impacting um, uh, the boy or the community at large. Where are tickets available? Can um, we contact you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we can be contacted um, for, for the tickets. Yeah. We've actually got an advert going around. It was um, in the number of times uh, end of last month and it will be in the number of times this coming Friday as well. Um, but yes, we can be contacted. Mm -hmm. Can we give you the number? Or? Yes, please, please give me your number. Okay. Your numbers. Okay, um, you can you can contact me on zero eight one eight four double five four five four, and I believe can be contacted on oh eight double one two four five three zero seven. There we go. Now, just finally, your message to the community: What would you like to tell the community? Please, please attend. Please attend the gala. Please come and see the documentary of what the boys has done this past year. Come and see the changes that has happened. And if you have a, a, a son or a daughter, bring them along. Let them join the program. There's always more space for one more. Yes, absolutely. I would really just love to close off with saying the security of the girl and boy child lies in the hands of the community. When we empower the girl and the boy child equally, we, um, we are securing the future of, um, of generations to come. You know, so um, both need empowerment, partner with us in making um, this a reality. Awesome, there we go, partner with us. Thank you so much ladies, it's always nice. Thank you, you <laughs>
Yeah, it's, it's the idea originated out of Thailand. Um, okay. it's, uh, in Thailand, they call it Itim Pad, meaning stir-fried ice cream roll. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Basically, direct translation. Yes, <laughs> Itim Pad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, tell us about the type of ice creams that you make. Oh, the menu is endless. Okay. Um, What's your favorite on the my menu? My favorite would be a, <laughs> a, a Raffaello okay. with a vanilla base um, topped with some caramel or toffee uh, sauce wow. and some more coconut shavings on top of that. Mm. And then for the adults, we normally add a bit of Malibu oh, wow. just to make it fun as yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, nice, yeah. Nice, nice. All right. So why did you decide to take part at, in the Tourism Expo this year? Um, firstly, from, from a business business standpoint, I think it's important for us to get our name out there. Yeah. Um, the Tourism Expo is a, is a great platform to do that. Um, there's a lot of exposure involved in it. I mean, I'm here today as well, which, which is great. Yeah. Um, and secondly, I think it's important to get the tourism industry back up and running um, in Namibia. Yeah, after um, COVID. After COVID especially, I think it's it's important to boost that. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, just to get involved with the green schemes as well, involved with, with, um, with the tourism expo. That's, that's probably about it. Mm. So, yeah. Awesome. So, where can we get the taste bud? On where are you situated? Are you online? Do you have a, a setup somewhere? So we currently have a day-to-day -day spot. We, we currently function out of a mobile food cart. Yeah. Um, we have a spot situated in Andima Toivu at Toivu Street, um, just in front of Cycle Daily Bike, bike Shop. Yeah. Um, we are on Facebook, um, the Taste Bud Namibia. We are on Instagram. We are on TikTok. And we are busy growing uh, or busy planning our YouTube channel as well so okay. that we can get out there on YouTube as well. I love that you seem to have a quite a wide range, right? Now, why is this platform so important to you personally as a business owner? You know, the platform either the platform of Tourism Expo or also just the platform of you having this type of business that you're so passionate about. Um, the, the Tourism Expo is definitely important to me um, in a sense that we, we're getting out there. Yeah. We want to be seen, um, especially with our, our dream, uh, myself and my partner's dream to grow the business um, into different assets or facets of, of ice cream business. Yeah. Um, we don't just want to be stuck with, with one type of ice cream. Um, so for us, it's important to get out there and share our, our dream with the people. Mm. Um, and being a business owner, I think it's been my dream for, for quite a while now to be an entrepreneur and be my own. Yeah. business owner you know and and i really have found a passion in in, in ice cream yeah. uh, funny enough uh, it's, <laughs> it's it's such a it's such a joyful thing i yeah. mean i always tell people we sell um sunshine in a cup oh, wow. uh, or joy in a Beautiful. cup you know it's mm. it's not just making ice cream uh, okay you know what my dream is since you told me about your dream my dream is definitely to taste one of your ice cream so Will you be having ice cream at the Tourism Expo yes, at your star? Are you selling it? Are we winning it? Or what do we have to do? So what we will definitely be doing, a, um, is we'll be having our mobile food cart at the Tourism Expo. Mm. Um, and when you come around, we can definitely sort you out with the <laughs> ice cream uh, of your choice. We'll, we'll, we'll check out our menu. We, the thing is with our menu as well, mm. it's very um, variable. We can change it up. Um, as tastes change, as the weather changes, mm, um, oh wow. we can add more chocolate, we can add more fresh fruits. Um, I always say a funny thing to some people, they always laugh, is uh, you can bring me a hot dog and I can make you ice cream. Oh, wow. <laughs> not, I don't know how it's going to taste, but um, you, can try, you can try I it. I love you know? the honesty. I don't know how it's going to taste, yeah. but we could always try <laughs> Awesome stuff. Thank you very much for joining us on Smell mm. the Coffee. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Awesome stuff. We'll be right back after the short commercial break. Stay with us.
So het ons nou tot op het einde gekom van nog een episode van Irongo Talk, maar jullie kan altijd gaan loer daar op ons webverf, dus www.irongo.com.na, dus www.irongo.com.na. Jullie kan ons ook volgen op Facebook, Twitter en op Instagram, of jullie kan in contact komen met ons bij 0117040, dit is 0117040, op beide WhatsApp en op Telegram. Let weet voor ons wat gebeur in jou dorp hier in die Rongo streek. Let weet voor ons waar jullie graag die Rongo talk wil zien, dat bij jou bezigheid, of wie jullie op die Rongo talk wil zien. Daar is daar iemand wat fenomenale dingen in jou gemeenschap kan doen. Let weet voor ons bij 0117040. Jullie kan ook voor ons die e-post stuur, dit is naar nieuwstips.irongo.com.ni Dit is nieuwstips.irongo.com.ni Jullie kan ook ons online programma volgen, dit is op oneup2.com, oneup2.com of krijg ons op televisie. Dit is ons televisiekanaal Network TV, dit is DSTV kanaal 285 of Kou TV kanaal 94. So tot de volgende keer, wees ons op die veilig, pas jullie zelf op, tot ziens.